Hello, do you hear me? Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon all of you. I'm so happy to be here with you. I would like to thank the Oslo Forum for this invitation. It is a commendable initiative to celebrate those who defend human rights and freedoms. Many of us here would admit to often finding it difficult to talk about themselves, of course, including myself. So I will try to show you how I come to my position on political and human rights issues, as this seems more important than storytelling. I grew up in Yemen, in a family familiar with politics and law. From early on, I realized that my country's political environment was unhealthy and unstable, and it was governed by corruption, tyranny, and failure. And this tyranny led the country to political and economic failure, social backwardness, and terrorism. This inspired me to fight back. I dedicated myself to fighting dictatorship and advocating for freedoms and rights, especially for the right to free expression, demonstration, and assembly. I started by writing strong articles against the dictator Ali Abdullah Saleh, then fought a hard battle to found my NGO, the Women Journalists Without Chains. I used to be told that you have a sharp tune. You have a sharp tune. And no one likes headaches. They told me that a very conservative society like Yemen cannot be changed. Some said that women cannot change society. But my father used to tell me that I should find solutions instead of waiting for them. So I began to roam the streets, carrying a megaphone, calling on people to wake up and stand up for their rights in the face of injustice and corruption. The authorities, the authorities used to call my family and tell them, if you don't silence your daughter, we will silence her. But I never given up. Since 2006, every Tuesday, I went to protest in Freedom Square in front of the cabinet in the capital, Sana'a. These weekly and sometimes daily sit-in and demonstrations continued until we announced our great peaceful revolution on 2011. Although we were subjugated to violations, we didn't stop. We continued, continued to demonstrate. The dictator kidnapped me and put me in the prison. He thought that would weaken me, but prison didn't make me afraid. It made me strong. It amplified my voice in Yemen and around the world. My imprisonment held to ignite the spark. Thousands of people took to the streets to call for my freedom, for my release. They hold my picture, as you say, the first time they had done this for a woman. Millions of Yemenis women and men went to the street, to, to, to the street demonstrate peacefully, chanted the same chant that I used to. The people want to follow the regime. People want to build a new Yemen 
الشعب يريد إسقاط النظام الشعب يريد بناء يمن جديد All those millions of people, women and men were struggling and sacrificing for freedom, democracy, justice and rule of law So for, for, for this I have been called, as you say, so the mother of the revolution, and I uh, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on 2011. So, dear friends, our peaceful revolution led to the resignation of the dictator Ali Abdullah Saleh and to transitional period and a successful national dialogue that brought all Yemenis together. We wrote a great draft of constitution that guaranteed all the human rights values and good governance principles that we sacrificed for. But unfortunately, the forces of the counter-revolution led by Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Iran started their war against our will to democracy, freedom, and justice. They committed all the crimes against us. They were just afraid from the will of our people and from any kind of attempt of their people to dream for democracy. So they supported the Houthi militia coup in Yemen, and they waged ugly war in Yemen that caused that Yemen now is suffering from the worst humanitarian catastrophe in the recent history. So some try to blame the peaceful revolutions for the heinous chaos that has many faces, such as military coup, terrorism, the civil war in all around the Arab Spring countries. But this could not be more wrong. This did not happen because we dared to dream. This happened because our dreams scared those authoritarian regimes who are afraid from their people's dreams for justice, democracy, freedom. Since 2011, which is the year of the Arab Spring, there has been a battle between two camps. The camp of democracy and human rights from one side and the camp of anti-democracy and human rights. The dictatorship in the Arab Spring are using all kinds of tools of oppression. They have thrown and tortured tens of thousands of people in the prison. They have killed and displaced millions of people. They supported terrorism. They support, they feed terrorism. And think by waging wars, destroying cities, spreading chaos, they will convince the West that the Arab region is not a place for democracy and human rights. And also, they will convince the world that peace and security can only by, be secured by tyrannical regimes. And this is a lie. This is the biggest lie. Dictators pose the greatest risk to the security of their countries. And they, are, they pose the greatest security to the global peace. Yes, dictators pose the greatest risk to internal security and the global peace. I have always believed that terrorism and dictatorship are two faces of one coin. And the time really has proven me right. Terrorism is a product of tyranny. And I have relent relentlessly struggled against both. So, it's shameful that dictatorship have close ties with democratic countries, with 
democratic regimes, with democratic governments like United States and the Western governments, who turn a blind eye to the gross human rights violations being perpetrated. The tyrant and human rights violators must feel must not feel unreachable by international accountability and justice. The tyrant and human rights violators must not feel unreachable by the international accountability and justice. For peace to prevail, the West must stop cuddling authoritarian regimes they must stop allowing the so-called war to be an excuse to protect those dictators. Many tell me that change is not possible, but I know that we shouldn't give up. We must not give up. Change toward uh, democracy and freedom, it is not only possible, it is inevitable. I have never thought of giving up. I'm not scared because I know time is on my side. Because I know that I am on the right side of the history. The dictators, with all their strength, are the ones who are scared. They know that their time is limited. It is our responsibility here, all people here in the Oslo Forum, and all people around the world who dream for freedom, democracy, justice, and rule of law, to stand up and to keep hope alive, to fight peacefully for freedom, dignity, and democracy. Dictatorship around the world are united. So to oppose them, to, affi to, to, to defeat them, we should be united too. We have, here we are in the, first, in the cent in 21st century, we have many tools that can help. Technology, internet, and social media are some of the strongest tools that we have in this century. Yes, there is too much hatred and polarization, especially that is being used by the organized campaign by the authoritarian regimes. And this media, this technology is being exploited and used against people who strive for democracy and freedom. But this tool also helped us to achieve our dream and will help us. So if we invest more time and resources, we can reclaim the online spaces. I am now a board member of the oversight board of uh, Facebook and Instagram, where I am trying to make changes on how content is moderated and ensuring that the freedom of expression and other human rights values are better respected. So our work is only a part of the solution. But I still believe that by helping journalists, activists, and ordinary citizens speak freely online, we will shake the yoke of tyranny and defeat them. So to me, to myself, to all of you, here today, we are fighting for freedom, for your people who are fighting for their people. Do not lose hope. We represent the future. The dictators are the loser. We will win this great Nobel battle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.